wake up the dead. This is a nightmare. Enough about nightmares. You've got to be on your way before the ash is out for breakfast. Look alive, girl. You'll never be a hired looking coward. I read this note. I told your mother I'd do what I could, and now I've done it. Keep your head over your face. Your mug's been in the papers. You can't tell them the truth or they'll send you packing. And God hates a liar, so just keep your mouth shut. You hear me? Keep your mouth shut. Well, honey, now. Go on. You talk? Uh, Lorraine, of course she can talk. Will you let me eat sweets? Lorraine? Oh, she gets far too many sweets as it is. Her father cannot say no. Will you paint with me and read me stories? Well, of course she will, won't you, Alice? Oh, yes, Mom. Has Trevor got one of his famous smiles for Alice? Huh? Our nanny walked out on us. Well, not quite, but she did leave us in a pickle. We need to find a replacement quickly. We're going on a big boat. That's right, dear. Tomorrow we get on a big boat for New York. Would you like Alice to come with us? I don't know. Well, of course you do. What about you, Trevor? Do you like Alice? Hmm? Maybe you should hold him. I'd like him to get used to you before we sail. You're supposed to hold his head. The note said that you've had experience with babies. I mean, that's imperative. Oh, yes, Mom. I've got experience. I love children. I, I was just nervous, that's all. Oh, well, there's no need to be nervous around us. We're just regular people. The most important thing is that you give our children loving care. Oh, my heavens. What a lucky girl you are. We're going to be sailing on the Titanic. Is the crew in order? Well, there's a fine bunch, sir. I know quite a few of them. Most come from the same neighborhood here in Southampton, but these 900 men never sailed together as a crew before, so there's a bit of confusion. Still, all in all, they're as proud a bunch as I've ever seen. Indeed, to serve aboard this vessel. Uh, also, Captain, well, to serve under you. Well, thank you, Mr. Lowe. There's always a bit of apprehension on a maiden voyage, but I have the greatest faith in all of my officers' men, including yourself, sir. Now I'm afraid I must face the most perilous part of the voyage, meeting all of those reporters. We have here the largest movable man-made structure in the world. A super ship, if you will. Eleven stories high, five city blocks long. A boat this big, it has to be slower than the Lusitania. Does the Lusitania have a library, a swimming pool, a Turkish bath? We're offering luxury, a colossal showcase. And I can assure you, young man, that this ship will give the Lusitania a run for her money. Is it your vision, Mr. Ismay, or the owner's? Well, in all fairness to J.P. Morgan, may I remind you that my father founded the White Star Line. And now I, as managing director, intend to bring it into the 20th century. Ah, there he is. Uh, Captain. Captain Smith, is it true you're retiring after this voyage? Uh, that's true. Will you be writing a book about your adventures? Well, it'll be a very short book, I'm afraid. I haven't had much adventure. What about wrecks, accidents? Well, there have been winter squalls and storms and fog, but I've never had any adventure worth writing about. Certainly not recording for posterity. I'm afraid that I enjoy uneventful sea voyages. Like the one you're embarking on, sir. Exactly. The shipbuilding has become such an art now that a disaster is unthinkable. My job has become... Uh... Oh, effortless. Thank you. Effortless. <laughs> May I point out the dining room? To your information, we are stocked with £75,000 of fresh meat, £11,000 of fresh fish, £1,120 of marmalades and jams, and of course, stock of the finest libations, cognac, oh, one moment. Yes, Sandeman Port, 1870. Very good. Thank you. And we have, uh, not there, this chair should go on the private promenade outside. Uh, they should be a darker green. They will be repainted before the next sailing. You can be sure of that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen to every detail. What about lifeboats? We have complied with the statutes of the British Board of Trade. But, gentlemen, we have here the largest, most beautiful, and technically perfect ship in the history of mankind. 
We're not going to need lifeboats. I thank you for your attention. And now, First Officer Murdoch here will take you on a short tour of the bridge. Good day to you. Good day, thank you. This way, gentlemen. <laughs> I'm here, mate. Here, take me, Kaplan. Keep your head and your booze and your wits about you. Farewell to Bloom in England. I'm set for Niagara Falls. That's in America. You see her out there? See her? The Titanic. Biggest ship ever made. Kid, walk right outside that door there. Here. See that? It's me ticket to a new life. Eh? No more coal dust for Miriam Dickey. <laughs> America! I'm the biggest ship I've ever dreamed. Miriam Dickey, sailing with some of the richest people in the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right about that. John Jacob Astor himself will be on that boat. That's a fact. All the money and jewels on board. Priceless paintings. The thief could have himself a high old time. Do you ever see a diamond tiara? <laughs> Can't say I have. Of course, the trick is getting the booty off the boat. Strings of pearls. Oh, yes, sir. A thief could have himself a grand old time. Mm. I'll be calling it a day. Man's got to get his sleep. Hey, I owe you one. No. Just the tiara. <laughs> you be careful. Hi. Miriam Dickey on the same ship as John Jacob Astor. <laughs> That's the joke of it, eh, lad? <laughs> Here. T to the Titanic. Titanic. So I can see and keep my mother or my father will have a crack I'll be across the sea. Come on, Dickey, you can't sleep here now, can you? My brother's got me a job. A whole new... Life for Miriam, Dickie. Yeah. Hey, wake up. I'll take you back to your boarding house. Dickie. Dickie. Say goodbye to Blooming England itself.
This is Paradox. Isabella. We're both going on the Titanic. It must be fate. I don't believe in fate, Mr. Park. Please excuse me. The death shall cover thee. Thou shalt sink deep in the ocean like a stone. Yes, miss. Ludwigson? Ludwigson. A lovely little lady travelling alone, are you? Uh, she's a convert, travelling with the group. My husband here is Black Billy Jack, and he's big enough to take you on, and a few more like you. So don't go bullying us because of our religion. We're no simps. No clever in there. Yeah. I be a blacksmith, sir. That's where my nickname comes from, not from my nature. Excuse me, I'm looking for the men's quarters. Well, look what the cat dragged in. I don't think I caught your name, chum. <clears throat> Miriam Dickey. Dickey, you say? <laughs> well, Mr. Dickey, I don't suppose you'll be travelling with these converts? No, travelling alone. Well, run along then, chum. I'll catch up with you later. Miss Ludwigson, if you'll step this way, the steward down the corridor will give you a cabin, Mr. and Mrs. Jack. All the little Jacks. I'm told we'll have crisp nights but clear skies straight across by Mr. Park. Henry, good to see you, Henry. Well, likewise, I'm sure, sir. You will see many familiar faces. Many of the regulars have joined us, sir. Mr. Wynne Park, across the hall from you, real gentleman. I have crossed the Atlantic six times with him. Generous man, if you know what I mean. I must ask for another stateroom. Mrs. Paradine, this one is exquisite. Every detail is... Please see what you can arrange. Mrs. Paradine, everything is booked solid. It's impossible. I can't stay here. Please, any room at all, just far from this one. Yes, of course. Thank you. Dear Aunt Grace, how sad for you, her passing. Well, I took matters into my own hands as soon as I realized that you were sailing with us. You will dine at our table, of course, and no moments alone. I'll see to that. And my granddaughter, Lulu, she'll keep you company. And my baby, Charlie. <laughs> Lulu, don't slump. It's so lovely to see you. Don't look now. That's the infamous Molly Brown. Her husband made a fortune in silver and gold mines. They say he tried to shoot her twice. It was a terrible scandal. She's crude, but one can't ignore her. She's far too rich. Oh, the Strausses. They own Macy's department store. Jewish. Oh, and Benjamin Guggenheim. <laughs> Most people are content to bring back souvenirs of the Eiffel Tower from Paris. He's bringing back his mistress. Well, he's not sitting at our table. <laughs> oh, the wine nurse. Al, the, 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 the wine nurse. Don't go fast. Take her out, Robert.
don't be wrong, miss. I left my family back in Denmark. I may never see them again. I grabbed my mother's nightcap from the clothesline. That's all I have of her. Well, more than I have of mine. I look for a better life. Yeah, me too. Oh, my heart is divided. Yeah, well, it's better you don't have a heart. An emigrant must have courage. I have to keep thinking of that. To be grateful to be on this beautiful ship. This is nothing. Steerage. I'm up there in first class. They got gold mirrors and crystal chandeliers. What is this first class? We all get to America at the same time. Yeah, but they get there in style. That's why I plan to do business. They're in first class. Don't take courage. Take smarts. Throw that bit of raggedy cap away. Let go of the past. my bloody suit. I gave my love a cherry What had no stone Come on, let's go. I gave my love yes. a chicken Ever's cold, Alice. Please, it's cold out here. I gave my love a It's night, Alice. Trevor needs his supper. You're supposed to take care of us. Stop whining. Stop whining. Stop whining. Come on, Alice. Excuse, excuse, please. These children. Did you see Mrs. Astor? Mrs. Astor? Mrs. John Jacob Astor. You don't know who John Jacob Astor is? The richest man in the world? I know you. Were you in Cairo last month? With the Hendersons, maybe? Oh, I've never been to Cairo. <gasps> Mrs. Astor! Your ache. Catch cold. And in your condition. It's chilly out here. We can't be too careful. You're right, Miss Miller. I keep telling my wife that. Now promise me you will eat a good dinner. They say our body needs these things they've discovered called vitamins. She eats like a bird, you know. She's eating for two now, and she's not getting her vitamins. <laughs> Just a few more moments, John, please, before we have to walk into the dining room. I have to be calm <laughs> and regal when they all start to gossip. Come, my dear. Mrs. <laughs> Astor. Mrs. Astor. Mother Foley, the Astors. Oh. I should think they would be dining in their stateroom. I mean, the nerve. They must have boarded a chairboard. Mr. Astor is a frequent passenger on the White Star Line. Not with her. I know the real Mrs. Astor. The first Mrs. Astor. They say she's expected. She can have a litter of little Astors, but she will never be accepted in polite society. Try to hell with polite society. They got each other in the U.S. Mint. <laughs> Ah, how may I assist you, madam? It's about Lulu. Uh, your daughter. 
<laughs> Actually, my granddaughter, we are always mistaken. <laughs> Captain, I was wondering, perhaps you might know of some nice gentleman on board who might give some company to Lulu, someone dignified, substantial, someone like yourself, only... Only, uh, younger. No, 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 not younger. Lulu is so incomplete. Uh, an older man would be helpful. No, I, I meant someone... Well-to-do, wealthy. Exactly. The trip to Europe was disastrous. All the men are foreigners. Fourteen hunters. Well, I promise you, I will keep my eyes open. Thank you, Captain. we going, Captain? I have a wager on it with Allison here. I say we're traveling in excess of 20 knots. You will excuse me. Captain Smith doesn't like to talk about speed, but I think it's safe to say that Mr. Allison owes you some money. <laughs> now, Mrs. Brown, would you care for some more oysters? Ooh, don't mind if I do. Yeah. <laughs> They're delicious. Uh, Big and fat and juicy. Oh, and some more, some more wine, please. Lafitte Rothschild. We don't get wine like this in Denver. <laughs> Boy, you built some robo here, Mr. Ismay. Well, I'm glad you're impressed, Mr. Brown. Yes, I was determined to create a ship for the 20th century. One must be a visionary. Now, uh, may I recommend the press pheasant or perhaps the uh, poulard pochet à l'estragon? <laughs> no skinny little poulard for me. Ah. I'm having roast mutton <laughs> and yo a mouton. You speak French? I hired a French tutor. He pulled a cork from a champagne bottle and put it in my mouth. The cork, not the bottle. <laughs> he said it'd force me to hold my mouth open when I talked. Well, I told him most people preferred me with my mouth shut. <laughs> we are forgetting Mrs. Paradise. All this festivity. Poor darling, your dear Aunt Grace passed recently in London. All those months alone in London taking care of the burial and your aunt's affairs. I suppose things were jumbled. We promised your husband that we'd watch over you on the voyage home. That's very kind of you. The Paradines have the most beautiful estate on the Hudson. <laughs> and your little girl is a dream. Miss Wally, could I have the pleasure of a dance? Oh, but Lula would love to dance, Mr. Park. As long as it isn't that abominable turkey trot. <laughs> One wonders what the world is coming to sometimes. Posture, you know. Such a charming man. And so very handsome. Our little Lulu could do worse. Our little Lulu couldn't do any better. He's shrewd, <laughs> intelligent. And loaded. Yeah. A marriage made in heaven. <laughs> you must long to dance to a young woman like you. It's so sad you're stuck in black for the whole crossing. It doesn't do much for your delicate complexion. I suppose your aunt's husband's grieving. The marriage only lasted a year, Mrs. Foley. I don't know where Mr. Santalisa is now. Why, well, she gave up everything for that scoundrel. Expect an Italian. He was after her inheritance. I said so. Poor woman. On the contrary, Mrs. Foley. My aunt had no regrets. In fact, just before she died, she told me it was a glorious year. No matter what the price, it was worth a lifetime. Would you excuse me? I have such a terrible head. Oh, poor lady. Let me help you to your room. No, no, please, please continue with your dinner. No. Wait. Go back to your dancing partner, Mr. Park. You're jealous. You're jealous. Now, you know how I feel. You can imagine what's been happening to me all these years. Eddie Paradine has everything your family's ever wanted for you. Money and a pedigree. He's a kind man. A gentleman, a good husband. Well, your marriage must have pleased your father and your mother. The parents are both dead now. The past is the past. Irretrievable. It's been with me every moment of every day. Do you think it's been the same for me? Oh, Bella. Oh, Bella. I'm married, Lynn. 
I never expected to see you again. You broke my heart. without him. You planning to have books yourself? <laughs> Me? No. Oh, no. Wouldn't be so good at it. Uh, raising pups. I mean. with what they like. They'll manage well enough until we reach New York. smoke a cigar before? No, yeah, I mean, not a lady anyway, not like you. <laughs> well, get used to it. Woman's emancipation. We can smoke cigars. We can tell you men how to run the world. Hell, we'll probably have a woman president in the next hundred years. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll be around to see that. Yeah, well, I hope I won't. <laughs> Go buy you another drink. Some brew on me. Whatever he's drinking. I've come into a bit of money recently. I'll share my fortune. Well, thank you, young man. You uh, down in your cups? No, you might say that. I've remarried recently. Mm. <laughs> well, that'll do it. <laughs> no, no, I'm happily married. I'm only worried about the reception my new wife received tonight in the dining room. Mm. She's very young. People can be cruel. Yeah, well, a bunch of stiffs fool themselves and all their money. Mm. Some tugboat, eh? Yes, it's a thing of beauty. Have you been to America before? No. No, looking forward to it. Uh, I might go into a bit of business. You ever hear this chap called uh, Max Sennett? Got himself a moving picture company. Calls it Keystone. Up and coming sort of thing. Yeah. Let me give you a bit of advice. I always find investors for my project. It's better to use another fellow's money. <laughs> yeah, well, sir, I can drink to that. I believe in using the other fellow's money, too. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, thinking more about um, acting in the Keystone Company. Might do a bit of Shakespeare. Well, I'm sure you'll do well in America. Whatever you decide at, young fella like yourself. Yeah, well, nice to meet you. No! no. Oh, God, clumsy, so My sorry. My wife will think I'm a sot. I'll have this clean for you. I've got connections in the laundry. Don't worry about it. Good evening to you, and I will watch for you in the moving pictures. Another brandy, ma'am. I make it a double. Yes, sir. Baby, you have 
dead in the water. It's only a dream, Alice. You don't have a baby, Alice. That's right, Lorraine. Now go back to sleep. Mommy's here, sweetness. We don't want to frighten the children now, do we? <laughs> the ice, there was ice in her ship back and he was out there in the freezing water. Oh, dear, not the baby, Alice, please. There, honey. Oh. What is it? Bad dream, apparently. She's very nervous. There's the night garments on backwards. We stop at Queenstown tomorrow. I think it's best for all of us if Alice gets off there in Ireland. Mr. Dickey. Oh, you. Uh, look, I know I'm not supposed to be up here, but an acquaintance of mine invited me up for a drink. Not well, some. Let me give you a piece of advice. Take it from your old da. Uh, you're holding Mr. John Jacob Astor's billfold. I saw you left it in the bar. You didn't realize that, now, did you, Mr. Dickey? John Jacob Astor? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm trying to be your friend here, son. Everybody needs a friend. I told you. You put the bite on the great man himself. I just want to keep you out of trouble, that's all. Nice young chap like you. There's a good boy. The best. You don't want to get caught in your first night out stealing billfolds. Especially one belonging to Mr. Astor. It's all there. I'll tell him I found it laying on the floor by the bar. Must have dropped today. Eh? You're not going to report me? Of course not. I helped you before, didn't I? Time to be picking billfolds is the last night out. Men get all the moolah out of the safe. Now I'm sure we can work out something that'll be good for the both of us. You're a talented lad, you are. I can see that right away. Quick and slick with your hands, you are. What's your name, son? Your real name? Well, it don't really matter now, does it? Don't be so prickly. I can't help if I worry a bit about the real Mr. Merriam Dickey. You didn't ask the fella, did you? Of course not. He passed there, drunk. <laughs> <laughs> drunk as a skunk, eh, hey, Dickey? <laughs> I can see you and I have gotten to get along really well. <laughs> passengers disembarking in Ireland must proceed to the boat deck. We have landed in Queenstown. Sir. No, don't make me go, I beg you. You've been fairly treated. I've given you plenty of money for your boat for back to England. Oh, you're kind people. You have to understand. I'm just a young girl alone in the world. Please, miss. You've upset my wife. All this talk about your baby. I couldn't help it. See, I had a baby what died. Your baby died. Where is your husband? This is my husband, sir. Anyway, he ran off. I can't go back to England. Don't cry. Will, will you promise to keep these things to yourself? It would only upset my wife. Yes, sir. I promise. It would also help if you could get through the children's supper without spilling soup. I'm nervous, but I'll do better now. If I give you this chance, you won't let me down? My word, sir. I give you my word. And I thank you for the opportunity to stay on a ship. I do, sir. I thank my lucky stars. Hello and goodbye to Ireland. Yeah, Rhode Isle. So green and beautiful. Makes me wonder if I should just stop here. Close to home? Is that what you're thinking? No. I try not to think of them. My mother, my little brother and sisters. Their life is so hard. I try to think of the future only, like you. No, not, not like me. You don't want to be like me. 
Anyway, you'll send for your family someday. Yes. How do you know that? You don't know me. I know that you're good. Good person. Maybe the only good person I've ever known. So, uh, which is which then, eh? Oh, green's where I've been, yellow's where I want to go. <laughs> right. You know, uh, Phillips, you're probably the only bloke who took the ad seriously. Join the Marconi Company, see the world. <laughs> yeah, well, here we are. Yeah, like hell, see the world. How are we supposed to see the world, Phillips? Stuck in this bloody broom closet. Wynn Park, I'm expecting a Marconi gram. Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Park. There's so many messages coming and going. Oh, there we are. There you are, sir. I'll be expecting several others. Uh, I'd like them delivered immediately. Right, sir. Smooth sailing all the way. I hope so. Cheers, Governor. It's a double eagle. It's a twenty-dollar piece. Look at that. Tin mines. Didn't that why I say tin mines? All right. You split up with me. Right. Uh... Oh. Please forgive me, I was a bore. Oh, well. Red dress. It can't be. She's in mourning. She appears to have recovered. <laughs> Palm du chess. Where I come from, we call a spud a spud. She's not sitting here. I won't have it. This is a disgrace. Hazel. It's only been a few months since her Aunt Grace passed away. She ought to show some respect, even though her aunt was fast. This is Paradigm. You feeling better? I am, Mr. Isley. Thank you. I feel queasy. Miss Park? Oh, he had urgent business. I understand the Bolivian government has given him permission to open some tin mines. That's dangerous. That that's Zapata fellow? No, that's Mexico, my dear. It's the same thing. Oh, here he is. I knew he wouldn't disappoint us. Evening. I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> so it's mining, is it? it? Takes perseverance. Me and my man, we never gave up when others did. Our little Johnny mine turned out to be the richest gold vein in the world. Of course, it didn't exactly buy us happiness. Well, money doesn't always get us what we want. Mm. You unlucky in love, Mr. Park? <laughs> My family tree is missing a few branches. <laughs> I set out to prove to a young lady's parents that I was worthy of her. And she married someone else. Mr. Park, you could have any woman in the world. Except the one I want. Oh. You'll be going there, Mr. Park, to Bolivia? Yes, as soon as we land in New York. Oh, you can come to our Lulu's birthday party. I mean, one little week. The Bolivian government can wait. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Paradox, will you tango? I thought you'd never ask, Mr. Park. My, my dear, are you forgetting you are in mourning? I've mourned enough. Oh, my. I feel absolutely faint. Dancing the tango. 
Tango. We haven't even finished the first course. They're just skipping to dessert. have packed all her things, so here I am, ready to move you. Move me? Well, you weren't happy in this suite, and it's my job to make you happy. Oh, yes. Well, that won't be necessary. I'm quite happy here now. Yes, but I've arranged for it. The Countess of Roth is. It took a great deal of maneuvering. I, I've changed my mind. I'm completely comfortable here. Thank you. Yes, but what do I tell the Countess of Roth is? <laughs> Captain? Um, no, Mr. Strauss, just uh, routine. <laughs> uh, you and Mrs. Strauss, enjoy your breakfast. Excuse me. Ah, yes, what is it? A message from the ship Baltic regarding ice conditions. I'm told that you've been discussing operation of the ship with my crew. Yes, with regard to our speed. Certainly within my prerogative as chairman. Things are running smoothly. The machinery is bearing the test. The boilers are running well. The ship is steady. And with power to spare. We can beat the Olympics record and be in New York on Tuesday. I see absolutely no purpose in arriving a day early. Well, I see no purpose in meandering. Keep you to a schedule devised for inferior vessels. But there are basic safety procedures nonetheless. I want the ship to perform to its full potential. In future, if there is any discussion about the operation of this ship, it must be cleared with me first. This may be my last crossing. But I'm still the captain. When? Good morning. Good morning. You couldn't sleep? No. Me neither. And I was up thinking about you, and life, and your daughter, Claire. She's such a tomboy. Hates fancy clothes. She's very bright, curious. She loves dogs. She loves horses. She rides for hours with her father. What are we going to do? All those years I've wondered about. Where you were, what you were doing. And now you're here. With you? For four days. going to do in America? I'm going to Minnesota with the other convert to build a new life. Oh, uh, I want to do good in this world, Mr. Dickey. Do good? I want to be a teacher or a nurse, have children of my own and raise them to be good souls and to help their fellow men. Like Mrs. Jack teaches her children. The Jacks have been so kind to me. What's your dream? My dream? Yeah. <laughs> you have a dream. I can see it in your eyes. You know something, Osa? I do have a dream. <laughs> have you ever seen one of those moving pictures? Moving pictures? Yeah, I saw one at a carnival peep show once. I put my eye to the hole in the box, and there was people in there. 
moving. Well, I mean, it, there wasn't really in there, but it was like there was. <laughs> there was this beauty, Mary Pickford. No, that's my dream. Mary Pickford? No, no, not her. I mean, my dream is to be a part of it, part of the moving pictures. Well, then you must work for it and make it happen. No, stupid pipe dream. Anyway, you could be in the moving pictures. I mean, you're much prettier than Mary Pickford. Well, moving pictures are nice. But uh, I'm not looking for pictures in a box. What are you looking for? God. They say we're at the dawn of a new age. The fires below are sending 50,000 horsepower to the propellers. Who knows what kind of progress we'll see in the next hundred years. Well, soon we'll be flying across the Atlantic in airplanes. <laughs> but nothing will ever be like this again. Nothing like the Titanic. A boat this big, powerful, and so beautiful. Mm -hmm. There's a rumor we'll be landing a day early. Only rumors. Captain Smith, could we bribe you to take your time? <laughs> to meander, of course, a little. I know what you mean. <laughs> I suppose I will miss all of this. There's magic to it. I enjoy it most right here behind the wheel. It's almost sacred. May I see it? <laughs> oh, you're right. It is magical. I can feel the power beneath my feet. Are you sure that you know the way to New York? <laughs> no, I don't. Maybe I'll just turn it around and go back to England. How does that sound? It's not fair. She's a married lady. What do you expect? A man loses his head when a woman throws herself at him. But he danced with me. Well, it wouldn't have hurt for you to throw yourself a little, Lulu. Get your shoulders back. You're going to get a hump. Most of them don't bother to leave their jewels with the purser. They want to wear them. Come on. I'll show you. Room service. Wrong room. Yeah. Room service. Precise. <laughs> we case out all the staterooms, find out where they keep them, and then on the last night out... We strike. That's right, my friend. There'll be confusion in the morning. How do we get it off the boat? The loot never leaves the ship. Mr. Astor's Lou. In the plumbing. We lay low and go about our business until the ship is fitted out, ready to sail again. I've got a plumber friend here. He's agreed to carry it all off in his tools kit. I don't know. You don't know what? Well, how do I trust you? <laughs> is that my buddy? Trust me. How do you know I wouldn't turn you in this minute if I got the urge? Hey, don't try to blackmail me. I could tell him a few things myself. I've worked for the White Star Line for 12 years. 
I'm a trusted employee. Who do you think they're going to believe? Me or Mr. Dickey, who isn't Mr. Dickey at all? Come on, boy. You better get out of here. Wrong door. That's the wrong door. Yeah, yeah, it's the next one. I've never been in such a grand house before. And there you were. You, you, were, you were playing the piano. Chopin. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> I only knew it was the most beautiful music. And the sun was coming through the windows and everything was golden. The sun, you, the dress. The dressing gown. And it was yellow. It wasn't golden. Anyway, the door was supposed to have been closed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lady lost a key. It was see-through. Your dressing gown? Yes, <laughs> it was. When you stood up, I could see you through it. I thought I was going to die. You find your room? Mm-hmm. First class, hobnobbing with the rich folk. <laughs> a real dandy, all right. Only Mary Pickford could see you now. <laughs> Pickford, Mary Pickford. You look beautiful. <laughs> but also, men aren't supposed to look beautiful. Why? Take me word, I'm not beautiful, not in any way. You are beautiful to me. Something has rubbed off for you and onto me. <laughs> Mr. Light Bowler. I'd swear there was a boom drill scheduled for this morning. Well, if I know the captain will skip it, some fool's gone and set it for the same time as the Sunday service, and the captain surely won't miss saying devotion. Chief Bell! Here, Mr. Chairman. Don't look so shocked, Mr. Light Bowler. I frequently check in the boiler rooms. Tell me, uh, how many boilers are currently lit? 24 of the 29 are in service. That's, uh, 80%, is it? 84, and the propellers are at 75 revolutions per minute. At our speed? 21 and a half knots, sir. Have the men light two additional boilers? Well, I've no orders from the captain. You have my orders, Chief. I want us at 22 and a half knots by noon. Carry on.
Everyone's at church service except us. We're the sinners. Hmm. You knew all the sailing on the Titanic, didn't you? Yes. It wasn't fate at all. You planned it that way. Yes. But it isn't enough. God, I want to be with you always. Comfortable, Olivia. Oh, I know I have no right to ask, but come. When? Come with me. I don't know. I just don't know. Does it have to end? They that go down to the sea in ships and do business in the great waters, they cry out to the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. In Psalms 107, verse 29, he maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. So he bringeth them unto their desired haven. Oh, the girl sets my hair on this. Amen. 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 Oh, I'm a sober here. She's reporting heavy pack ice ahead. Large bergs. And field ice. Oh. All right, well, uh, I'll run up to the bridge. Actually, not now. It's 20 minutes to five. Let's clear through some of this back load first, eh? Right. right. Now, you must come visit me sometime in Denver, Captain. I, I'm having a huge party in June. Well, I suspect that in June I should be in Hampstead, making up for all the gardening I've been missing for the last 40 years. <laughs> I'd like to spend a little time with my wife and daughter. Oh, lovely. I understand. My husband, J.J., is ambitious and smart, but he's more comfortable in Leadville. Myself? I want to be more civilized. <laughs> I guess that's why we've gone our separate ways. Tell me something, Captain Smith. Won't you miss the sea? I suppose I shall. But just between you and me, sometimes being on a ship is like being in jail <laughs> with the possibility of drowning. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've just got three more days. There's only three more days. Yeah. Then you're a free man. The rain don't run your spillet. Yeah. What's going on here? Now, look what a mess you made. You seem to have your hands full. I'm Marge Miller. What's your name? Her name is Alice. Rain? Shh. Come along. This is paradigm. Hello. You look happy. I am. I think I am. Mrs. Astor, oh, yes. please call me Madeline. Madeline, may I talk to you? I feel like I'm going to burst. Of course. Shall we? <laughs> what was it like when Mr. Astor got his divorce? It's painful. For everyone. I felt terribly guilty. But we've embarked on a new adventure. I try not to look back. Are you... Contemplating divorce? I have a young daughter. I could never leave my daughter. Oh, but surely you could arrange something with your husband. He would never let her go. I couldn't hurt him either. In a way, I feel indebted to him. He helped me at a terrible time in my life. He was, he was my knight in shining armor. <laughs> You're in love with Mr. Park, aren't you? Yes. I have loved him for many years. These things seem like they can never work out, but somehow they do. Life is so short, Isabella. There's hardly any time, is there? Anything important? 
important? Another ice warning, sir. It's from the Coronia. Post the coordinates. I will, sir. Remarkably cold tonight, is it not? Yes, it is. I've sent word down to the carpenter to take care of the fresh water supply. It'll be below freezing during the night. Not much wind. Flat calm. In 24 years, I've never seen so calm a sea. Hmm. Low, low. Breathe and blow, wind from the western sea. Over the rolling waters go. Come from the dying moon and blow. Sir. Upon my word, I have not thought of that verse since I was a cabin boy. Love of the ocean brought me to the sea as a lad, and there's still wonder in it. Are we not a bit fast? Uh, Mr. Ismay, sir. He seems intent on breaking records. He was in the boiler room today. I'm going below. Keep sharp. The first sign of any haziness. We'll need to slow down. I'll deal with Mr. Ismay in the morning. Yes, sir. Stoke down the boilers. Low one's position for the night. Come on, boy. No shame in having some joy. No, no, I, I, I don't know. Show you. Upstairs, the wine is flowing, the jewels are sparkling. The stars are jewels. We're all the same under the stars. I'd get them for you if I could. All them stars. There's so much out there just waiting for us to scoop it up. Hey, I promised you a tiara, and Jamie Purse is going to get you one. Who is Jamie Purse? Doe, yeah. I forgot. Um, Jamie Purse is my real name. But, Mr. Dickey? Uh, that was just the name on the ticket. How did you get the ticket? You're not a thief. Um, fact is, I, I found it. You're right. I'm not a thief. I just seize the opportunity. If you'll excuse me. I don't mean to interrupt, madam, but uh, me and Mr. Dickey have an appointment with the ship's purser. I gotta go. Purser? Don't go with him. I have to. Haven't you ever had to do things? Been forced to do things? I try to stay true to myself, if that is what you mean. You're so bloody good. Always on the straight and narrow. Well, that's not the way the world works. Look, maybe I'm not so great, but I can change. I wouldn't mind a piece of her myself. You want to get smashed in the face? You do. And you'll end up in the ship's brig, you silly bugger. No. I'm having a job with the purser in his office. Perfect time for you to lift the key out of his pocket. Magic hands like yours. No problem. Understand? All right. You just stay away from her. You hear me? She's too good for the likes of you. And me. Four bells. Ten o'clock. Ocean's as smooth as a mill pond. Water's like oil. I was saying the same to the captain. He left word to be cold if conditions become doubtful. Good night, Mr. Murdoch. Yes, right. Good night, Mr. Lighthorn. It's cold out tonight. Aye. By the smell of it, there's ice about. You smell it before you get to it. Of course, I wouldn't tell the bigwigs that. They think you're stupid. But you know what I say?
through the eyes of this here ship. But don't expect no respect. What I expect are some proper glasses. I've got good eyesight, but I can't see in the dark. Well, I asked again just tonight. They were like to have bit me head off. I'm through with the blooming sea. After this one, I'll go back home, make an honest woman of me, Linda. There's a ship. Off the southeast. It looks like a big passenger liner. Maybe ten miles away. No. She's something like ourselves. A small freighter. Not that far. Any other ships in the vicinity? The closest one's the uh, Titanic. Can't be the Titanic. She's closer to us in size. That must be a freighter for a fishing boat. Maybe. Hub Evans, radio the Titanic. Tell him we stop for the night. Surrounded by ice. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I wish to send a wire. Right then. Address at the top. My husband is at our home on the Hudson. This has to go out immediately. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the thing of it is... Oh, we're uh, bogged down here right now. The wireless broke down last night and wasn't back in commission until five this morning. We've got quite a backlog, ma'am. Please, this has to go out immediately. You have to send it right away before I... Before, ma'am. Before I lose my strength. Before I change my life. Please, uh, just send it. Well, uh, don't worry, Mum. It's very urgent. Promise me. We'll do the best we can, eh? Some bloody bloke's gonna get the shock of his life. Ah, shut up. Shut up. You're jamming me. Damned freighter Californian. Stuff in the night on account of ice. They keep interrupting. Bloody Titanic wants me to shut up. Well, the same to you, buckle. I gotta get Mrs. Paradine some message out. Poor lady. Oh, your bank, Chief. Hi, thanks, Jack. It's me prize. Tobacco from the East Indies. Keeps it next to me up. It's me treasure. Oh, that hurt. Are they really angels, Mama? Of course there are angels. Watching over you and your sister and your brothers. Over all of us. And over this ship to make sure we're safe. Oh. You're a mass of snarls, Miss Ophelia Jack. Need one of them angels down here to brush it out. It doesn't look right. Young girl like you alone in the world talking to that hooligan. We are all God's children. You said so yourself. Chat like that cause you nothing but pain. There. Here we are. You're almost an angel yourself. <laughs> We're off to bed now, Osa. Sweet dreams, Osa. Sweet dreams. You say your prayers, oh, sir. God will keep you from harm. And all the angels, too, Mama. And all the angels, too. <laughs>
you, but you are no She is. I've been racking my brain trying to remember where I know her from. Her name is Alice. That's what the little girl said. Alice. Mrs. Astor, I must go get your husband. It just came to me. Alice Cleaver, that's who she is. What are you talking about? Um, nothing, nothing that concerns who you. Who is Alice Cleaver? Not in your condition. I'll speak with Mr. Astor. He'll know what's to be done. Playing like this, you're gonna pay for my trip. <laughs> and tomorrow night, poker. Oh. You must excuse me for just a moment. We'll wait. He's the one with the money. There's something wrong with my wife. Oh no, no, she's safe in bed. Well, what is it then? You must go have a word with Mr. Allison, sir. You must warn him. What are you babbling about? The nanny, I recognize her, sir. Alice Cleaver. She was convicted about three years ago from murdering her baby. Where did you hear all this rubbish? It was in the paper. They let her out of prison, said she was deranged at the time on account of the baby's father deserting her. They granted her leniency, which is no excuse if you ask me. Her little child... It's away. after 11. I can't go wake them up now. But she's in charge of the Allison children, sir, and she's a murderer. Perhaps you're mistaken. At any rate, nothing will happen tonight. I will talk with Mr. Allison in the morning. Uh, I'm sure he won't mind your waking him up under the circumstances. In the morning, Miss Miller, I will speak with Mr. Allison in the morning. She... She threw him from a train. The baby boy. The touch of haze on the horizon. There's ice ahead. Yes, what do you see? Ice! Dead ahead! A berg less than a mile away! Thank you. Iceberg right ahead. Hard to stop it, Mr. Hitchens. Hard to stop it. Helm is hard over, sir. Full speed astern! I'm, uh, I'm, I'm 
closing the watertight doors. Note the time and enter it into the log. Struck something, Mr. Murdoch. An iceberg, sir. I hired a starboard and ran the engines full of stone, but it was too close. I'm afraid she said it. Dearest God. I closed the watertight doors, rang the warning bell. Sir, do you hear me? Impossible. This cannot have happened. <laughs> Second, we hit an iceberg. That grinding noise we heard? Perhaps we lost a propeller. Good, it gives us more time for bridge. The boat stopped cold. Ah, oh, a few hours we'll be back on our way again. Anybody want a souvenir? <laughs> Isabella, did you see it? The iceberg? We've done a terrible thing. What? I sent Eddie a wireless. Yes. I can't give you up. I won't. I've told him all about us, and I've told him I'm going to live here with you. Thank you. People screaming. 
bodies floating in the water, chairs, tables, and a baby. A dead baby in a cold water nightdress man, you said. I've seen it. She has taken damage along 300 feet of a starboard side. Oh, my God. You have broken on the cardinal rules of safety. Never turn your broadside to danger. Had we struck the berg head on, only one compartment would have been flooded. I thought I could avoid hitting the berg altogether, sir. Not only did you stop your engines, you reversed them. She would have turned much more quickly, the greater her forward motion. Yes, but the watertight doors were closed immediately after impact. The, the compartments behind them were sealed. These watertight bulkheads go up only to E-deck. The weight of the water in the bow will pull her down by the head. This ship can't sink. The ship is about two hours. The lifeboats. We have lifeboats. We must launch them at once. Get everyone off the ship. That won't be entirely possible. Of course it's possible must begin immediately. You may recall that we have precisely the number of lifeboats required by the British Board of Trade. Seats for 1,200 people. There's over 2,000 people aboard this ship. 2,230 souls. I cannot allow this. Mr. Ismay, it was under your directive that we were traveling through an ice field at the arrogant speed of 21 knots. I am the master of this vessel, and I have been too complacent. Captain Smith, uh, general distress over the wireless should be sent immediately. Mr. Murdoch. Yes, sir. See that the passengers are roused. Mr. Lightoller, organize the crew to uncover the boats. It would be best, sir, if we didn't give any indication to the crew or the passengers as to the seriousness of the situation. Yes, quite so. We don't want to start a panic. Yes, quite, quite so. The captain requests all passengers to report to the main deck at once. Now, there's no cause for alarm. Dress warmly and please bring your life jacket. Please report to the main deck at once. Mr. Allison, sorry to disturb you, sir. What's going on? It's impossible to get a night's sleep. What is it? The captain requests all passengers to report to the main deck. Dress warmly. What is it? What did he say, Hudson? Just stay here. I'll go up on deck and find out what's going on. No, don't leave us here alone. Get a hold of yourself, Bess. I'll come right back. But he said to get dressed. I don't know what to do. I don't want to wake up the babies in the middle of the night. Perhaps you should get dressed. Oh, Hudson, then it's true. Alice was right. Calm down. Just just get dressed to be on the safe side. I, I don't know what to put on. What should I wear? I, I had on my, my black tweed this afternoon. Warm. Just dress warm. Alice, help me. What is that? They're releasing the excess pressure from the boilers. Please bring your life jacket. They're not actually going to put us in lifeboats, are they? No, no. But put on your life preservers, just as precautionary measure. They're on top of your armoires. Dress as warm as you can, darling. Why? If there's really no danger. You just do as they ask. Put on a few layers and a warm coat. I'll meet you upstairs in ten minutes. Henry, what's the truth? I don't know any more than you do, sir. I'm just doing what they tell me. Shift, lad. What do you got tonight? Oh, just the Titanic. Sending up a batch of messages to keep race. That could be interesting. Yeah. Do you mind if I uh, listen for a while? How about it? How's your Morse coming? I'm picking out the odd letters. You can get the gist of it sometimes. Well, I'll see you in the AM. Prepare to call for assistance. We've struck an iceberg. These are the coordinates. Which call should I send, sir? The international call for help, CQD. Come quickly, distress. Just that. Hi, sir. Oh. Hard to be the captain's shoes when he tells Astor and these rich mucky mucks they're going to be a week late getting to New York, eh? Oh, 
car run out. Well, I'm too tired to wind it up tonight. I'll do it in the morning when I've got more strength. Good night, mate. Don't tangle him in the folds. It's just no joke, sir. Don't you know that you care? Come on. Is that you, sir? Come on. Follow me. We've got to get up to the boat deck. Hey, what's the matter with you? Come on. Don't ask me questions. Ask nothing. Don't, don't ask me. Look, Osa, I'm trying to help you. I'm not my man. Any man. Hey, I'm not just any man. Leave me alone. Hey, look, I don't know what's happened, but you have to listen to me. You've got to come up with me to Adek where it's safe. My girl. There's Osa. Look at oh, this. Osa. I knew no good would come out of you. What have you done to her? I found her. I would never hurt her. Take the children down to the common room and find your father. She's been beaten. Lord knows what else. The crew come down here helping themselves, touching the girls and saying bad words. They think we're weak because we're people of God. Maybe they never heard of God's vengeance. But report this to the captain, I will. The captain don't quite have the time right now to be hearing complaints. Now's the moment, lad. It couldn't be better. I can't come now. She's hurt. Something's happened. I, I can't get it out of her. Let our people take care of her. We have work to do, you and I. Are you, uh, coming then, Mr. Dickey? Get her in some warm clothes. Yes, yeah, so hold on, you. Look, I'll be back. Just stay with the Jacks. Stay with them until I get back. Where do we go? What do we do? Do you people understand anything? Go to the common area and wait for instructions. Come on! Watch out, Farah. I'll be back. You can't count on him. Not a man like that. Oh, my girl. You're locking it? Just trying to keep things orderly. Looks like they're loading up the lifeboats. <laughs> I never imagined this in my wildest dreams. People leave their staterooms in a panic. We go on and clean up after them. But, but what about the people down here? Come on! Time is money! <laughs> Captain Smith, I have a word with you, sir. I'd appreciate a true appraisal of our situation. We've been damaged badly. How badly? Our ship has a couple of hours. This information must not be circulated for obvious reasons. Are there any rescue ships on the way? So far, we have been unable to contact any vessel near enough to help us in time. It is imperative that we get the women and children into the lifeboats. You might want to see to Mrs. Paradise, of course, without delay. Yes, sir. Mr. Park, there are lifeboats for only half of those on board. I see. Thank you for your candor. Godspeed, you candor. And to you, sir. See you later. Titanic? Is that you? You ever get your traffic from Cape Race? <sighs> Some bloody fool was asking about our passenger mile. Come at once. We've struck a bug. 
It's a CQD. We're sinking. Tell your captain. We've only got an hour. What? In the name of heaven! It's the Titanic, sir. She struck an iceberg. She'll sink within an hour. Dean, turn the ship around immediately. North, northwest. Aye, Captain. Are you certain of this message? Absolutely, sir. Fox will survive 20 minutes in this freezing water. Send word to Captain Smith. We're coming as fast as we can. Even at full steam, it'll take four hours to reach her. Where is my husband? Where is he? Hey, Mom. Drink this. You have to get dressed. Oh, my babies. I can't put my babies into a lifeboat. It's freezing. It'll be fun. Now we'll get to go on the boat. Everyone up on deck, ma'am. I'm coming. I'm coming as fast as I can. Did you pack the children's things, Alice? The, the nappies and the warm leggings and the baby's milk cup and his, his teething ring? Don't be scared, Lorraine. We'll take some sugar water, all right? Some sugar water. There's no time, Mom. We have to go. I can't. I can't go without my husband. I'm not leaving without my husband. Get in the rain, Mom. We're gonna drown. Wait, you must wait for my husband. I'm coming up, sir. Alice, come back here. Come back here right now. You must have the cotton for Trevor's little ear, and you don't have the sugar water. Are we going to drown, Mommy? Oh, no, of course not. No, it's nothing but a drill. It's just some kind of a drill. Oh, my poor darling little girl. People, please listen to your instructions. This group will be in boat four, and this group will be in boat eight. They will be ready momentarily. All right. Oh, yes. <laughs> Important just, things to keep warm here. Uh, I've got to follow you. Glad I grabbed these on the way up. <laughs> hey, put on that lapis. Doesn't do much for a lady's figure, but... Hey, no room for luggage, Buster. Leave everything. I even left a wad of money rolled up in a pair of French bloomers. You can't embroider, but what the hell. Darling, you look so great. Are there enough boats? Yes. No, they're taking the women and children first as a precautionary measure. Then I'll wait and go when you do. You have to get on with the other women. We'll be together in a few hours. In heaven or in hell. <laughs> we'll be ready at just a moment. Come to the truth. We have about an hour before this ship sinks. I'll take you to a lifeboat and find you later. In a few hours, we'll be having breakfast up some freighter. Is that a promise? Now, ladies and gentlemen, would you all please line up by the door and please keep order here. That is the main thing. Do you know what this is about? It's some minor damage. They're just taking precautions. You? It was that woman, Alice Cleaver. She has the Alice and baby. Get a hold of yourself, Mrs. Miller. She's obviously helping them with the children. We have an emergency. Locked! The bloody lock is up down here! We're all the bloody stewards! Go back! Go back the way we come! Everything will be all right when we get to America. Everything will be all right once you're baptized in the Lord's Church. We'll never be baptized. Of course you will, of course. We will not let an iceberg stop us. We will not. I am damaged goods. Oh, my Lord, girl. You can't give up because some bloody bully forces himself on you. Do you think God will hold you accountable? He tests us in every way. Fight the good fight of faith. Do you think Clorinda Jack goes down with a whimper? Clorinda Jack goes down with a sword. Listen! The water's ankle deep in some of the cabins in the front. Nobody tells us what to do. Aye, we laid eyes on one of the stewards. He said an officer was coming. Well, where the hell is he? We're locked up down here. We must wait. Clorinda, play some music. Let's keep calm. Keep our spirits up. Show the children what courage is. Like only yesterday, a sail from out of port. A wonder if from Aaron's Isle I landed in New York. Any response? No. 
ship seems to have stopped for the night, like we have. Well, alert me of any changes. I'll be resting on the chart room settee. Keep a look around. You hear the old man? He'll want to know if she comes any closer. Just what I'd be longing to do, wake him up. Look what I found. It's so dark down there. It's so cold. Oh, it'll only be for a few hours. There's ships on the way here right now. We'd just feel better if we were together. So would I. The captain was adamant and I gave him my word. To Bolivia. We'll get there, won't we? Next year, we'll be sitting on a terrace in La Paz, looking down at all the red tile roofs with Claire, too. There's something I must tell you about Claire. I love her. Without even knowing her, I love her. Almost as much as I love her mother. Think of the stories we can tell her. We'll look back on this as a real adventure. It's got everything. Action. Danger. Romance. We'll brag about this to our grandchildren. Grandma and Grandpa were on the Titanic. Move it, everybody. Move it along. Come on. Come on. We haven't got all day. That's it. Ah, uh, isn't that lovely? Music to drown by. Ah, so what's the happy news from the bridge? Oh, it looks grim, Phelps. We're all sinking by the head. Yeah, they're gonna start loading folks in the lifeboat soon. So, any word from the Carpathia? Yeah, I was away, but still our best bet. I'm sending out the new signal, SOS. Oh, yeah. Might be our uh, last chance to use it, eh? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, what a sorry sight that'll be, eh? I mean, the classiest ship ever built, towed down by a rust bucket. God, can't keep my head on Captain! We need light, Chief, and power for the wireless. Well, do what you can. Mr. Allison! Mr. Allison! Now, don't you be afraid. Alice is here. I ain't gonna let nothing happen to you. Not this time. Why isn't this lifeboat being filled? Nobody said to load the boat. See here. Get back with the other passengers. I am the chairman of this bloody shipping line. I want these people aboard this boat immediately. What became of the boat assignments, Mr. Lowe? Nobody ever had any boat assignments, sir. Hurry. If, if it is serious, we must make sure to get on a lifeboat. We'll take this one. I'm frightened. Stop whining and get in the boat, Lulu. I'm sorry, remember, no dogs. The women only right now, sir. What are you saying? Nobody's going to tell me to leave Charlie. That's the orders, ma'am. Your husband left her way behind. I am not talking about my husband. I'm talking about Charlie. I'm not going to leave my helpless little dog on a sinking ship. Come on, Lulu. We can't let these few women go alone. You heard me. No men, no dogs. Charlie will sit right here. Thank you. Please. Right this way. Why don't you stand? Right this way. Please, why don't you stand? We can't fill these boats to capacity, sir. 65 people and they'll buckle under the weight. I say lower them half filled. We can load more people down there from the gangways. No, no, no. Too dicey. How long do you think they would last if they went into the drink? My God, man, that water's 28 degrees. Better to take that risk than to kill them right off, sir. You men know how to row? Think so, sir. Good. Then you're in command of this boat. Stand by the aft gangway and be ready to receive more passengers. Aye, sir. Now, are there any more ladies before this boat goes? Me, sir. Me and my baby. Yes, yes, of course. Let one of the men hold your baby while you get it. I'll take him. Yes, yes. Hello. Sweet baby. I want to get on the boat. I don't want no strangers holding my boy. It's only supposed to be ladies and children. All right, men. Don't let him off. Let's go. Come on. Everything will be all right, folks. So we've spotted what looks like a steamer, maybe ten miles off. Splendid. 
Has she acknowledged you? No, sir, not yet. Well, keep signaling. Tell her with the Titanic was sinking. Come at once. If she's answering, I sure enough can't tell. Ah, uh, she's too far away. She can't see us. Any response, sir? No. No response. I thought I saw something, but... It was only her masthead light flickering. Fire some rockets. Yes, sir. Load away! Load away! If you get the hell out of the way, they'll be able to do something! You're not going fast enough! Quick up! If they go any faster, I'll drown the whole lot of them! You know who I am. I don't care. If you're the bloody Prince of Wales, you move back or I'll knock your teeth down your throat! Don't you point your finger at me, young man. Couldn't have asked for more. They sent me down here to lock up all the staterooms to prevent looting. We got enough. Haven't even started yet. I saved the purse's office. People won't have time to get stuff out of the safe. What about the people downstairs? I told them I'd be back. Plenty of time to be a hero, Sunshine. Plenty of time. Yeah, but all hell has broke loose. They're firing rockets. <sighs> ah, lovely. Key fit perfect. <sighs> Fortune smiles. An act of God. That's what I say. What do you say? I say we start worrying about how to get off this damn boat. It's white. It's supposed to be red for distress. That's all we have, sir. Yeah. Keep firing them every five or six minutes. There are only seven left in the crate. Well, fire them all! Until they're gone. Yes, sir. Have a look at her now. Another rocket. How many is that now? Three? The ship's not gonna fire rockets at sea for nothing. And maybe they're in some sort of distress. Uh, thanks, mate. So kind of you. What do you want? It's Grove, sir. That ship's firing rockets. Three so far. Are they private signals? He's asking if they're private signals. Fisherman's flares now. Just tell him the rockets are white. Uh, Captain, all we know is the rockets are white. I'll try the lamp again. If you get a reply, let me know. Good. Get your coats. We have to hurry. Trevor, she took Trevor. Alice took him. What? She's crazy. You knew it and you let her stay. Beth, stop. Stop right now. Where did they go? Where did she take him? How should I know? She ran out in the hall and all those people and I couldn't leave Lorraine and I didn't know where you were. You just left us here. You let her take the baby? She grabbed him. I couldn't stop her. You weren't here. It's not my fault. We don't have time for this. Get your coats and go up to the boat deck. Where are you going? I'm going to find Trevor. I'll meet you up on the boat deck. Beth, you have to be strong now. We both must be strong. Oh, baby. I'll find him. I swear to God, I'll find him. All right, Lorraine, come on, come on, come on. Everything will be all right, Mommy. Don't worry. Oh. Oh. Chief, Colonel, there's another generator. Well, Captain Lord. Great, sir. Stop the fan! Anything not essential! At all costs, lads! We've got to keep the lights at about 20 gorks! Get it on, lads! Keep the water under that spoiler! It's so wide open! Out of the question. Lock the guns back in the safe. I can't have you shooting my passengers. You'd rather they drown? That's quite enough, sir. We've too few men to control a mob come to that. Just, just keep in mind that a number of our passengers are very influential people. 
Just remember that. I can't be responsible. So don't offend anyone in first class by blowing their brains out. Mr. Lighthaller. Here. Take it. That's it, that's it. Sit down, please. Don't be scared. These boys know what they're doing. That's right. Okay. You're going to. No, no, no. I'm going, I'm going. Hey, no, take your hands off me. No! Nobody tells Molly Brown what to do. Rotten scrubs. Captain Smith's going to hear about this. Oh, you shut up. Stand alongside. You're ready to take on additional passengers. My wife is in a delicate condition. May I accompany her, please? No, sir, Mr. Astor. No man is allowed on this boat or any of the boats until the ladies are off. The number of the boat, so I can look for her later. Four, sir. Don't make me leave you. Nonsense. I'll be on a later boat. Don't worry. After her, please. Oh, my life, Mr. Astor. Oh, my life. The boy cannot go. Of course he can go. He's only 13. No more boys. Here. No. Here, Sophia. Take it. You'll need it. Ida, take your place. We've been living together for many years. Where you go, I go. I don't think anyone would object to an old gentleman like Mr. Strauss going with his wife. I won't go before the other men. I will not be separated from my husband. What am I to do with you? <laughs> will you look at this? A diamond tiara. And it's a beauty too, Mr. Dickey. Just like I promised. Down there in steerage. What if they can't get out in time? They could drown. Can't save the world, lad. Not likely. How do I look? We'll cozy our way onto one of the boats. We'll be taking spots meant for women and children. Some poor cows and their mangy kids down in steerage that'll never know the difference. <laughs> I don't think I could live with myself taking a woman's spot in the boats. Have you gone daft? Look, I don't think I could live with myself if I didn't try to help. There, take it. It's yours. I'm not going. Have your senses left you? The people down there are in steerage. I can't just leave them there. They don't know where to go. There's Sir Jacks and Osa. <laughs> You're worrying about your little beach, aren't you? More like a sack of potatoes, if you ask me. Don't worry. They'll get them up here in plenty of time. You can have your turn on her. Mind you, there's been a long line of them before you. <laughs> you dirty beggar. Ow! Ow! It was you! You're the one! What did you do to her? What did you do? <laughs> she was begging for it. No! <laughs> Crush your skull wide open if I don't mind. But I've got more important things to do. You're a dead dog anyway, laddie. Give it a boy. You're going down with the ship. Well, in that case, I ain't gonna be needing no tiara. Save yourself, boy. Save yourself. Hey, out of my way. Women and kids, Celia. Hey, they come and took a group of 25. They said they were coming back for more, but we all want to go now. Hey, get your flock. Follow me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hey, we have to hurry. Get you out of here. It's too late. No, they're still loading women and kids. You went with them. Yes. But I came back. Look, I told you I can change. I'm here now. I don't want to live anymore. What happened to your faith? Your courage? 
is no God. I look for him. There is no God. I never felt like this about nobody in my whole life. There has to be a God. He brought you to me. Come on. Excuse us. Hey, excuse me. Please, let us through. I can't open the gate without orders. My God, man. I've got to get this woman on a boat. Look at her. She's been hurt. All right, women and children. Go with the sailors. Go! Now we've got a chance. I'll find you. No, we need you with us. That's all for now. What? Through. He's got children. He's got to get his kids safe on a boat, boy. Right? Let my wife through. And my children. It's all right, Billy. We stay together as a family. I'll be back to get you through. Don't worry. Come on. Let us know. You have a peach orchard in Minnesota. You have your whole family from Denmark. Let's even become a nurse. Go on. Careful with her. If I get out of this alive, I'll find you. I swear I will. Oh, we need help. Man. Can you work a damn it? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. I, I can try. Go on. Jackson! 
drinks are on the house. I'd ask for ice, but this is ridiculous. Cheers. Gentlemen, you have done your duty. You can do no more. Now it is every man for himself. That's the way it is. Times such as these. I release you. Abandon your cabin. Save yourselves. Right way, sir. He's right, Phillips. The pal's almost gone. Phillips, you're talking to yourself, mate. Guess we'll get to see a big part of the world tonight, eh? They say it's three quarters water. Oi! Blimey, you've killed him. Well, he didn't deserve to die like a sailor. What do you think you're going? Where's our boat then? Well, if I come up here, this boat is full. What about the rest of these lads? This boat is full. Now get back. Son, I'll shoot the next man who moves. Well, gentlemen, I suppose it's every man for himself. Murder! Why have you deserted us? Open the bloody gate! I told you, first class only! This way! That's all, gentlemen. You've done yourselves proud. Stay with me, stay with me! You British! 
men! Still here. My wife refuses to leave the ship until we find our son. What? What about this child? I'm going on a lifeboat. I'm going to see to that now. I'll get her into a boat with a responsible person. There are no boats. Oh my God! My babies! <laughs> there has to be something. A collapsible. You have to help us. <laughs> Please help us. Sorry. There's nothing I can do. <laughs> Doctor, have some of the mates bring a dozen heavy deck chairs below. Equip them with heavy bindings. We may have a few hysterics with which to contend. And uh, see to getting some ice and canvas bags. Put them in the cargo bay for the dead. Iceberg ahead. Port around 10 degrees. Maintain your speed. Morning 10 degrees. Eyes ahead, lads. But do neither the Titanic nor ourselves any good if we succumb to her same fate. Perhaps it would be prudent to stop. We do not have the luxury of prudence. Cut off all heat and hot water. Route every ounce of steam into the engines. We must go faster. Aye, sir. They told us to wait near the ship for survivors. When the ship goes down, she'll take everything with her. For those people. Jacks. We still have room on this boat. Trust me, ma'am, we'll go back, all right? We just have to wait a bit until things calm down. There could be hundreds of people trying to get on this little boat. We'll end up saving nobody. We can't leave all those people. Himself cannot sink this ship. Well, she was appropriately named. The Titans dared to challenge the gods, and for their arrogance, they were cast down into hell. the man that very thing now, won't we? It's frightfully cold. Now we must keep buttoned up and sit close together. What have I done? It's 
is a cruel joke. To have left our lives in Dorchester for this. We've never shrunk from danger or hardship. We've always met it head on. You're a good man, Black Billy Jack. You're honest. You're hardworking as the day is long. And you can be tender too, and I love you for it. Look! Have you ever seen so many stars? It must be a million. A billion trillion! <gasps> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. You fools! They'll drag us under! They'll swamp us!
Jack Phillips! Why are you so bad? Anyone see Phillips? We've got to paddle away. We've heard Paul's Get back! Get out of it! No! Get out of it! Get out of it! Get out of it! Get out of it! Stop! Stop! You'll founder us! Stop at once! The service for Lord Dolan. Keep your wits about you. Now spread out! Even the load! Hang on, old man. Who is it? Somebody in the water. They're all around us. Take one and we got them all. Too many here as it is. You'll go under. Oh, sir. Help me here. Help me get her in the boat. Go. It's blue. Take hold, officer. Take hold of my hand. I'll bring you in. Never fear. I got you. We made it. Just hold on. I never knew nobody good like you. Nobody in my whole damn life. But if I get through this, Jamie Purse is going to be a different man. Just hold on and don't let go. There's one thing I know. I love you. You're blooming out of your head, mate. You're blooming out of your head. Where is she? No, sir. It was here. I know you was. I could feel you. It was not true. Oh, sir. So, how do you think it happened to them? I would not venture a guess. E.J. Smith is the finest master in these waters. Maybe nobody can master the sea. Ice ahead. Take us round at my direction. I sir, in your direction. How long can they last in that cold water? Not long. A few minutes, perhaps. An easy death. I don't know if there is such a thing. Keep him with us. A light! Pipe down. Nothing but a shooting star. Oh, look, Lucky, it's a flare. Look! I another one! The it's a ship! I see it. She's right. Come on. Come on, shoot him an oar. I'm not gonna die in some rotten little boat. Don't kill him, Maria. Please, Amelia, don't kill him. Come on, 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 come
parking handy. They didn't spot the bloody rockets. Do you think they'll see small boats low in the water? So, we'll row to them, won't we, ladies? Come on, children, or sit here. Hey, you're a strong cuss. You can surely help. Come on. Too cold. Why are you trembling like an aspen? Here, take this. I'll have none of this. Sit back down again. I'm in charge here. Blasted female. Any closer and I'll toss you overboard. Now, come on. On the beat. One. Two. One. Two. One. Two. They don't see us. Well, let's make them see us. Come on. Wave those lanterns around. And find some towels or some blankets. We can put them on the oars and we can set those ablaze. And people, shout. Shout as loud as you possibly can. Come on. Come on. the order Miss Carpathia. I'm Captain Arthur Rostron. Fifth Officer Low, sir. <clears throat> My ship foundered at 2.40 this a.m. We struck an iceberg at 11.40. How many people were left aboard? Hundreds. Hundreds. Perhaps a thousand. Perhaps more. They've all gone down with us, sir. Do you understand? Gone. Go below, lad. Get yourself warm. Yes. Right this way. Yes, sir. The crew will take you below, get you some soup, something hot to drink. I do not want anything. Please. I'd be much happier if you just left me alone. Get me to a room where I can be quiet. I wish you would. Mr. Stevenson, take Mr. Ismay to my quarters. Some dry clothes, um, a blanket, um, and something hot to drink, some soup. He needs a doctor. Is there a doctor? Do 
Just breathe, darling. Just show them you can breathe, darling. Just breathe. Just, just breathe for me. Just for me. Please, just Mommy. Breathe. Let me help you. No. Please let me go. He needs me. Isabella, there's nothing you can do, anybody can do. Mr. Park is gone. He's gone. And everything is gone. Everything. find anyone still alive out there. Plot a course for New York. The women on deck have the crew take them below. As soon as we depart, we're going to realize they're widows. Yes, sir. We've searched the waters. There are no more survivors. I'm sorry. Isabella. Three hundred thousand dollars. Securities. My entire Paris wardrobe. Twelve pairs of shoes. Good shoes. Two, three. Your dog. Don't give me that look. He sat on my lap. And Mr. Foley, whose lap did he sit on? How many people were in your boat? How many people? Twenty, thirty, I don't know. We had no room. There was room for sixty-five. I lost everything, too. Look at me. I am a sight. Not even any face powder. What about you? healthy young man like you, whose seat did you take? It was an accident. I, I fell from the davit. How convenient. It's true. God knows I don't deserve to be here. I'd give my life to save one of them lost. I'm sorry. I don't deserve to be here either. Excuse me, have you seen this girl? Uh, excuse me, I'm looking for this... Uh, I'm looking for this girl. Uh, Osa Ludvigsen, Danish. Uh, the Jack family. Have you seen any of them? Uh, I'm looking for this girl with the long blonde hair. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Oh, sir. I've been looking. You're all right. I wouldn't have left him if I'd known there weren't enough boats. Excuse me, ma'am. I, I, I thought you were somebody else. I'm sorry, ma'am. I was wearing a red coat. Oh. 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 wants to take my leg. Says it's frostbite. Not going to let him know. Not about to lose it, right? That way. Just got to keep it moving. Gotta get some soup in this gal, or, or she's never gonna make it. Here, come on. Hold her up for me. Oh, sir. Is it you? It, it happened, didn't it? You, you came to me in the lifeboat. I was trying to keep you from falling back in the water, but I closed my eyes for a second, and when I opened them, he was gone. Honey, he was dreaming. She was pushed out of the boat. Mrs. Paradine and Officer Lowe pulled her out of the drink. Is there a 
want you to drink this soup. Here. <laughs> you, you gotta get some nourishment. Go on. Jacks? I haven't found them yet. Not even the children? Not even the children. All those people. They're gone. Good people. And look at me. <laughs> Common thief. Why am I still here? What kind of God would permit that? What's the reason? Maybe there's not such a thing as a reason. It's accepted. A gift. A chance to start over. You know that there's hell. So could there be heaven? Paradigm, you must come down below. It's cold. The ocean's so big, isn't it? And it makes one feel so small, so insignificant. Maybe it's just to remind us that someday, someday we'll all die. It's good, ma'am, that we don't know how things are going to end in the beginning. Or oh, we never make the journeys that we were meant to take in this life. The journeys that make us who we are. You're a good man, Oxalo. I guess so. what I, I, I want to say is that I, I think you're a good sailor. Brown, you came through. Oh, well, the Titanic wasn't unsinkable, but I am. How do you feel about the White Star Line? In Leadville, Colorado, where I come from, Mr. Ismay would be hung up on the nearest pine tree. Did you lose much? Everything I own is at the bottom of the sea. But don't mention it. No, the real shame is that those lifeboats left half empty. Mrs. Brown, what are your plans? I'm thinking of running for the Senate. Well, I survived this, I could survive politics. <laughs> clear that John's sons won't be coming for me. Of course they will. There's so many people out there. What about you, Isabella? Eddie will come, won't he? In spite of the wireless? No. No, he's a very proud man. I was going to set the world straight. And I only succeeded in hurting two more people. My husband and my little girl. He'll let you see Claire, won't he? I don't want to think about that. I guess I'm at his mercy. I recognized her from the picture I'd seen in the London newspaper. Alice, now we know who you are. Give the baby to Mr. Allison's brother here. He'll take good care of him. Him. Yes, you did. But he's not your child. Come on now. This way, this way, Alice. You risked your life to save this baby, is that right? Uh, I risked my life. Alice, we understand what you've been through, but can you give us a little smile for the camera, Alice? Yeah, Pretty girl like you. <laughs> You're a real hero, Alice. Am I? Your courageous story is going to be in papers all over the country. Is that so? Have you anything to say to the people of America? His mother, she'd give him to me. She knows what a strong girl I am. And, and the ship was going down, and there was force of water rushing down the hallway. And she knows she can, 
trust me to get him safe. I've saved him. They're here. John's sons, I can see them. They're here to meet me after all. <laughs> it will be all right, Madeline. I know it will. Thank you, Isabella, for helping me through this. Sea voyages for me. Figure I beat the odds this time. I'm not gonna be testing fate again. Are you still going to California? Actually, I was thinking about um Minnesota. I mean, maybe I should join the church. I don't think you'd really like that. I just want to be with you. Start a life with you. A better life. Maybe it's waiting for us in California. No, 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 sir. What, you're giving up your dream. Well, you have a dream, too. About pictures in a box. They have nurses and teachers in California. Peach trees, too. And oranges. Oranges as big as grapefruits. They were grown in our own backyard. I'll pick one for you every morning for breakfast. How's that? You're right. 